Hello, David here, and welcome to Robot Reachability Part 1, where you will learn how to locate a robot in order to reach all of the required positions. Let's start by building up the layout. From the e-catalog, select a workpiece positioner and double click on it to load it into the 3D world. Then drag and drop a robot, placing it in front of the workpiece positioner. Then we'll use the rotation function of the PNP tool to rotate the robot 180 degrees. Left click on the ring and holding your mouse button, rotate the robot. Then position your mouse cursor close to the arc that appears and use the circle to move in increments of 5 degrees, allowing you to select 180 degrees. Then while the robot is selected, using plug and play, we'll add a welding torch, which will be attached directly to the flange of the robot. Then for the workpiece, we will import a CAD model included with the download for this tutorial. To download the file, click the download files button that appears below this video in the Visual Components Academy. Or if you are watching this video on YouTube, click the link in the video description to visit the Visual Components Academy page. Then, when you have the CAD file on your PC, from the Home tab, under Import, click Geometry. Then select the Weld Part CAD file and click Open. From the Import Model panel on the right, under Include, we will disable the Materials option, since we wish to apply our own material type. Then click Import below. Then with the CAD model selected in the 3D world, from the Component Properties panel on the right, we will select the material. In this example, we will select Steel. To quickly locate Steel from the list, type the first two or three letters of the word. Then from the Hierarchy section of the Home tab, select Attach. To attach the workpiece to the table of the workpiece positioner. And from Tools, use the Snap option to snap it to the midpoint of the table. You will notice that although we have snapped the workpiece to the midpoint of the table, it is not centered. So again, from the Tools section, select the Measure tool. Then left click to pick the first measurement point. And moving the cursor to the other side, we can see that along the green Y axis, the width is 400 millimeters. Dividing by two gives us 200. So then selecting the Move tool, we can center the piece by moving it minus 200 millimeters along the Y axis. Note that you can either drag the green Y axis arrow in the 3D world, or just enter minus 200 in the Component Properties panel on the right. And now with the components added to the 3D world, we will need to connect their interfaces to enable component communications and the sharing of joint values. Use the All Brackets Control F function from the 3D World toolbar on the left to fill your view with all the components. Then using the PNP tool, select the robot and from the Home tab, under Connect, select Interfaces. And from the Connect Interfaces panel on the right, the component value will be the robot and the interface value will be the workpiece positioner. And to connect the interfaces, you can either select the workpiece positioner from the list below, or in the 3D world, left click on the robot and drag a connection to the workpiece positioner. Then with the interfaces connected, click on interfaces again to disable the view. We can now start locating the robot. If you select the workpiece positioner and select the move tool, you will notice that from its X, Y and Z coordinates, that it was placed in the center of the 3D world, when we double clicked on it to select it from the e-catalog. We now want to place the robot in line with the workpiece positioner. So selecting the robot, using for example the move tool, you can either move it along the green Y axis, or simply set its Y value to zero, by clicking on the green Y icon from the Component Properties panel on the right. And now, while the robot is selected from the Program tab, select the Jog tool. 
Then from the view selector, click F to display the side view. And if necessary, use the all brackets control F option from the 3D world toolbar as well. Before we begin jogging the robot to check its reachability, it might be useful to note the coordinates options in the jog panel on the right. With the coordinates set to world, the flange at the end of joint 5, where the tool is connected, will be highlighted. And if you move the camera around, the X, Y and Z axes will match the floating origin that appears in the upper left corner of the viewport. If we then set the coordinates to parent, the coordinates are based on the local origin of the robot, as the parent component in the 3D world. The difference might be more obvious if we quickly select the Move tool and set the rotation value of the Z axis to 90 degrees. Then selecting the Jog tool again while switching between World and Parent coordinates, notice how with Parent selected the red X axis is now based on the origin of the robot in the 3D world. Now let's use the Move tool to return the robot to minus 180 degrees based on the world coordinates. And returning to the jog tool, select object coordinates. Notice how the z-axis of the selected object, in this example the welding torch, is in the horizontal position, based on the local origin of the tool. Illustrated by the fact that when it is first loaded from the e-catalog, the welding torch is in the upright position. And now, selecting the robot again using the Jog tool and either the world or parent coordinates, using the green Y-axis square, we can jog the robot to check its reachability based on its current position. And we should also check the reachability of the actual welding positions. Since we have already connected the interfaces of the components, in the Jog panel on the right, we can control the angle of the table where we placed the workpiece. We'll set a tilt angle of 45 degrees and rotate the table 90 degrees. And then from the jog panel on the right, using the tool drop down menu, select the tool center point or TCP. Then using your mouse wheel, zoom in and holding your right mouse button, rotate the camera until you can see the corner of the workpiece where the metal joints are visible. If you want to save this camera angle for quick access later, from the 3D World toolbar on the left, select the View Editor, and clicking the green plus icon will add this view to the list. And to access the view again, select it from the list. Now that we have the tool center point enabled, from the tools above, we will use the snap option to check the position of the welding torch. The orientation appears to be incorrect, so from the TCP snap panel on the right, enable set orientation and the bisector, allowing us to select the corner area. And now, using the mouse wheel, we can zoom out and holding right click on the mouse, rotate the camera. Then holding both left and right mouse buttons, pan the camera until we have a camera angle to continue testing the reachability of the robot. And we can add this angle to the view editor as well. When rotating the Y axis of the tool center point, the welding torch seems to reach quite nicely. We should now rotate the table so that we can check the reachability of the long edge of the workpiece. Holding your left mouse button, rotate it 90 degrees, or double click on the value of joint EJ2 in the jog panel on the right, type 0 and press enter. And again, zooming in and jogging the tool center point, we can check the reachability at this angle as well. Then zooming back out from the limit section above, we will enable color highlight to highlight a joint in red when it has reached its limits. 
and if we jog the tool center point along the green arc of the y axis, you can see that if joint 5 would be at an angle of more than 30 degrees, it would be out of reach, as indicated by the joint in both the jog panel and in the 3D world. And if we set the rotation angle of the y axis to 45 degrees, you can see the limits of the reachability. And snapping the tool center point is not permitted outside the limits of the reachability. In this example, a simple solution would be to raise the vertical height of the robot. So selecting the move tool, we can move the robot upwards along the Z axis, or from the Z axis value in the properties panel on the right, enter a value of, for example, 400. And then returning to the jog tool, if we now jog the robot again, we can see the improvement in reachability. Since the robot is now hanging in the air, we should place something below it. So returning to the Home tab, from the e-catalog, we will select a simple robot pedestal. Since we raised the robot to 400 on the z-axis, let's make the pedestal 400 tall and 500 wide and using the PNP tool, place it below the robot. And now that we have the robot in position, selecting the program tab, and from the jog panel, using the tool center point, we can check at which angle we can reach the other side of the workpiece. Then if we switch from the jog panel to the component properties panel of the robot and select the workspace tab, we can enable the profile or envelope options. And with the profile option enabled, we will select F for the front view using the view selector. And from the 3D World toolbar on the left, enable the orthographic option. Then from the simulation controls, select reset to reset the positions of the components, which will also remove the tool center point selection. And note that the workspace profile applies to the origin of the end of joint 5 and not the tool center point of the attached tool. The workspace profile defines a two dimensional area that the center point of the fifth axis of the robot can reach. And to assist with displaying the limits of the workspace profile, we have also enabled stop at limits from the limit section in the ribbon above. Using the simulation controls, we can again reset the robot's position. And from the limits controls, disable stop at limits, but leave color highlight enabled. The robot can now move beyond its limits and the joint reaching beyond its limits will be highlighted. The message panel output option included in the limits controls is useful for checking when a component moves beyond its limits during a simulation. We will jog the robot to three locations within the limits of the workspace profile. And using the program editor on the left side, create three point-to-point -point motion statements. Then from the 3D World toolbar on the left, we will enable frame types and from the list that appears, select robot positions, allowing us to view the point to point motion statements we have created. And if we run the simulation, we can see the robot moving between the three points. Now let's reset the simulation and using the move tool, select point three and move it outside the workspace profile and note how the color of the point to point Robot position P3 turns to yellow when it is moved out of reach. And if we run the simulation again, we can see that once the robot reaches point 3, the joints are highlighted since color highlight is enabled. And as the message panel output option in the limit section above is enabled, in the output panel below, an error message is printed. Now let's use the orthographic option from the 3D World toolbar on the left 
to return to the 3D world view. And staying in the program tab, select the robot and from the component properties panel on the right, in the workspace tab, disable the profile and enable the envelope. And we can then complete the layout by adding another workpiece positioner, some fences and a safety light curtain. This completed layout will be included as a downloadable file along with the CAD file we imported earlier. And with the envelope enabled, if we return to the jog panel on the right, we can see how the envelope allows us to check the workspace area of the robot in 3D, allowing you to estimate whether the robot reaches all possible positions, such as tool racks, workpieces, machines and so on. And we can enable the limit options as needed, so that we may continue to check when a robot joint has reached its limit. And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.